Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Erin Frizzell, the Managing Director of the Eastside Culture Crawl. And before proceeding, I would like to acknowledge that we are living, working, and creating on the traditional unceded ancestral territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil peoples. Welcome to the virtual preview week of the Eastside Culture Crawl. It's running now until November 9th. And then our open studio events this year are November 12th to 15th. November 19th to 22nd. Guests can connect with artists both virtually and in person by appointment. Please visit culturecrawl.ca for all the details. Today, we're pleased to present our artist demonstration series. This is the second of fourth. Please join us in welcoming Lori Goldberg, who will be demonstrating unexpected ways to upcycle your plastic bags. Over to you, Lori. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. How are you? Um, thank you very much, Culture Crawl, for inviting me to do this demo. I'm quite excited to share what I have to offer you today. Um, I've been an artist for many years, and since uh, the impact of the urban environment on the natural environment has been a concern of mine since the since I began painting in the early '80s. Um, my work has reincarnated itself in many different ways throughout the years. And just recently in February, it feels just recently, um, I was fortunate enough to go to an artist residency uh, located in one of Mexico's natural oases, a sensitive jungle near the Meso Mesoamerican reef. The jungle reef and, sev and uh, several of their species are in danger because of development and the uh, climate change. I believe we have uh, a shared responsibility to repair our planet and perhaps through recognizing the origins of the everyday materials that clutter our ecosystem, we can increase the respect we owe to nature and understand how we how our existence is uh, tied to success of the environment. So during my residency, I engaged 150 um, middle school children and the community to work with me to create um, uh, from their single use plastic, a uh, installation um, thinking about their flora and fauna. And what I would like to do is just show you a few uh, images of that experience, because I think it was pretty remarkable uh, from the beginning to the end. I, I spent a month there working with them. Uh, I'm just going to share a screen with you before we begin our, our uh, hands-on workshop and just uh, show you a few of the images. I just thought we'd start off with just how the, um, the impact of plastic has on our environment. Even though in our part of the world, we don't see it, it's more uh, obvious in other parts of the world. Uh, so just to start with, I got the children to gather their single use plastic from their uh, packaging of things that they would purchase or have. And then all they needed was really simple materials, a pair of scissors, a felt pen, a glue gun, some packing tape, and then a drawing. Now, what I did is I divided the children up into groups of what they were interested in um, in creating in the flora and fauna concept. And, um, and then I got them to put them in color um, groupings, which they did. And they also had to wash it. I don't know what's going on with this picture. There we go. And then they had to wash them all. And then I started getting them to cut it up. You can see some of them are drawing. And they started cutting them up. And then with a tap of packing tape, they would stick them all together to create these sheets. And then from the sheets, they would cut out their drawing or their, their, they would draw out their image on the sheets and then cut it out and then start um, building their, their uh, sculptures. Some of them were 3D and some, oops, sorry, I missed a nice one. I don't know what happened there. Uh, this is a lovely one of a turtle. They also use plastic containers. 
these are the boys that were not the easiest to get engaged, but they got into it once they got the knives and <laughs> started creating things out of their, uh, their plastic pop bottles, which by the way, apparently they don't get recycled in Mexico, at least in this area in Acomal. Did I say it was Acomal? Um, here's a, a group of happy children, students, I would say, and uh, this one here is another proud group. I just love their smiles and their, their feeling of accomplishment. A lot of these kids do, uh, in this school, in Acomo, uh, the Pueblo of Acomo, these children do not have art classes. This is a real privilege for them to be able to do something creative in the classroom. Uh, this is uh, the grouping and they're carrying uh, their certificates, which I created for them at the end. I didn't want them to, i just get there in a second. I didn't want them to um, go away and just have this one experience and that was it. But I wanted to have it long lasting. So I created these uh, um, certificates of appreciation and also uh, uh, belonging to a larger group, which is a global movement of trying to uh, make changes in the environment for the next generation. I just wanted to throw this one in because this is where we're going to go. Actually, he's the one that gave me the idea about uh, wearable plastic art uh, using the single use plastic to make art, uh, sorry, wearable objects. Uh, after he did his contribution, he made this purse and he was so proud of it. <laughs> uh, here's the uh, certificate that I designed and created for them. And each of them had a signature on them. Um, by me and the uh, the principal of the teacher of, of the school and the residency. And you can see by their smiles, they're very proud and excited to having them. <laughs> and I even gave them to the teachers because they were willing to put up with me. And here I am just starting to install the installation. We chose uh, an area in the school where they have a uh, a sacred grove of trees. And we thought that would be a an opening where we invited the community and any all the, and all the school kids to come and, and uh, celebrate. Um, I just wanted to show you one more thing. Um, if I can, I think it was in here one more time, let's see. No, that's it. Okay, there is an animation of it, but uh, you can find it on my website. Okay, great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you over to my uh, workspace and I'm going to start creating, um, I'm going to show you how you can make your own purse. Uh, but also I wanted to show you what I'll before just to show you some options of what you can do. And then at the end, I'll do a couple more, another idea just quickly to show you other options. So um, over, so I just wanted to show you is that you can take the plastic, which is basically your plastic bag, any kind of um, plastic packaging, and you cut it up and then you can um, put it together and you can create you know, wildlife if you want. And what I did with this one, just to get it close up, is that um, I attached it by sewing using the sewing machine. Very easy to do and uh, very fun and different on both sides. Even the sewing itself is quite interesting because it's quite random. I'm not a sewer, so it's fun to use it as a drawing tool. That's one idea. Another idea is that you can take the same thing, but you can stuff it. So it doesn't have to be wearable. It could be decorative or it could have an installation idea. Uh, this is a great project that you can work with your family and you can work with community. Uh, this is a, just a, a fish one I did. I've done a lot of fishes, but this one, um, fish, but this one is uh, sewn and with bubble wrap on one side and thin. And then I've moved it further into something more um, complete where I've actually added glass, found glass. And this is a broken window glass that I've painted and then resined on to one side and kept the 
bubble wrap on the other. And they hang, hang as mobiles. All right, so that's kind of like some ideas. And then uh, that's outside of what we're doing today. Um, I'm just gonna show you some of the things that I've made already. I've made a little pocket um, purse for you to look at. This is uh, actually, you can add anything you want. I added some buttons that I found and you know, it's a small little, I guess, change purse. And then a little, maybe this could be for um, pencils or any other things that you can think of, maybe a makeup bag. And this one, let me get this out of the way so it looks a bit more clearer to see. This one is more like a, a purse. You can hang off your shoulder. Now what I'm showing you is like my ideas of that I've come up with. I'm not the greatest construction person of making things. I'm sure you could do a much better job than I, but um, I'm uh, exploring and, and trying things out. One of my favorite things I made, which is just uh, the other day, I wanted to show the other potentials that I made a belt. And I think this is pretty groovy. <laughs> I think I'll wear it in public. Why not? Uh, so that's just take, I went to Value Village and I got a cheap belt and I just uh, took the belt buckle off and then recreated it based on what I saw, how the belt was, was uh, designed. And then I made one out of the plastic garbage that was in my garbage. Everything that I have here that I'm using is from my own consumption. Embarrassing as it might be because there's some candy stuff here that I guess it was from Halloween. Okay, so materials. All you need is a pair of scissors, packing tape, and that's the other thing. If you don't really like the idea of using more plastic like the packing tape, then you can just use the single use plastic and sew it together. But I'm also going to show you another one that's about fusing. It's about fusing the plastic together. And I'm going to show you how that's done after I do my demo on the purse. This is um, fused right here. It's very effective and really cool. And I'm not using any other plastic except the plastic from my garbage. So anyways, in this project, it's single use, sorry, it's the, um, and the fusing it involves heating. And I really don't think it's really appropriate for young children to use. And also you do have to wear a mask, uh, something to cover your face because it is probably giving off some toxicity. Uh, exacto knife, felt pen, I'm trying to get my head out of there, felt pen, a hole puncher, rulers, and of course, your plastic bags. All right, so let's begin. So the first thing you want to do is you want to cut up your plastic bags. Make sure that you clean them up first, you wash them. And I'm just using a pair of scissors, but you can also use your exacto knife. And please always cut away from you. So the scissors are great for the younger children. And for you, you can use the exacto knife. Great sides, both sides. You never know what's inside of these uh, packaging. You can be quite surprised. So I'm just going to keep on cutting until you get a pile. I'm just going to move those out of the way because I can actually cut up some already for you. I'll just hide that underneath my desk and move over to. Always make sure you close your knife after. The ones that have already cut up. I also like to, I have drawers of this that of plastic bags that I've kept over time that I like the colors and then I put them in color coordinating. Uh, I coordinate the colors so that they could be quite interesting together. This one doesn't work. So I cut up and I'm also using netting. Why not? So now I have a bunch of cut up paper, plastic and you know you can even integrate other things if you want you can i'm going to just cut up a few of these you can integrate um, some film why not 
I just happen to have something like that lying around in my craft drawer. Craft drawer. It's my art drawer. Throw that in. Um, if you want, you can even incorporate um, a drawing from your child. You can even cut that out and put it into it. Why not? I mean, you can start off with using your, your uh, plastic packaging, but then you can also add uh, buttons and you can add drawings and you can add other things that might be of any interest because they're all going to be hermetically sealed at the end um, in this project. Uh, and then um, instead of throwing them away in the landfill, you can be using them. And the thing about this project, which I find really interesting, is that it keeps on metamorphosizing. It can change. After I get tired of the purse, I can cut it back up again and make something else. And I think your imagination is really uh, what determines on what you can do with it. Like already I'm thinking of uh, placemats or, um, actually it reminds me, I also did another idea where you can weave. Um, you can weave the plastic together and create something with that. So that was an idea that I had that I'm sure it could go somewhere, but you can make placemats. How about an apron? or a bib for your, your you know, or um, these are some of the ideas that just came to me that um, maybe you might come up with ones yourself that could be of interest. So, so I was saying you can always repurpose your repurposed project. I'm just cutting them up in smaller sheets. You don't have to, if you want larger and, and, and uh, sheets and, and to show the logos or the brand on some of the, packaging they have uh, to make a statement or just because aesthetically you like it or because you like that product, um, why not? So now what I do is I just have, I have this on a piece of glass here. Um, you don't want anything sticky to lay this on. So a piece of wood would be ideal. And I'm just layering the plastic together and in a way that aesthetically might please me or I might just want to do it randomly and not be too caught up with what it might look like. Though I can't help it, but I do think about that. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm just throw a few more of that here. Flatten it down as best you can. That part, that's the tape. Just lay it down flat on top. Down. There's my brush and my brush. So I'm going to con uh, continue repeating this across, overlapping the tape. It's kind of fun because all of a sudden you've taken this useless stuff. Okay, so it had utilitarian reasons, you know, for you know, holding our, our goods uh, and then transforming it into something completely different, totally unexpected. That's why I think that this type of workshop has some in, important impact is because we're taking something that is used for one purpose and redirecting its attention into something completely different. And by doing that, it takes it outside of its, its purpose or its understanding of what it is. And by doing that, it makes us think about more about what it is. And you're also handling it in new ways. So by engaging all your senses, I believe that this is one way that we can bring more awareness of like that impact our environment and for generations to come. If you think about this, this plastic is found in our waters and on our lands and you know the animals come and you know they consume this plastic and then we consume the animals. So you know is this what we want to continue doing? I'm just continuing here. Add it down. Put on some good drumming music. Like this. So, the thing about this project, too, is so great is that you can never make really a mistake. You can always correct it with a little bit more tape. 
So I got one side, it's pretty good. Uh, over here, I could probably do with a bit more tape. Now what I do is I peel it off. Oops, I pressed too hard. Maybe you shouldn't press so hard. Forget the drumming music. Off. And now we got the other side. If you want, I can press you. There's a little bit of a problem there, so I'll have to cut it off. Doesn't work. Get rid of it. I'm just going to put a, a couple more pieces on this side. And then I do the same thing. By the way, did I say you can make a dress out of this? No, but you can. People have. Then uh, fashion shows using plastics. You can see it doesn't take a lot of time to get to this stage. If you got some tape that's uh, still activated on this side, well, what do you do? Cover it up with more plastic. That's not there. So, Let's see how you can continue adding or taking away very simple and complicated and there is my sheet for now you know this is what it looks like for both and i can decide what side i want to use so now i got this odd shape i could have done this before and that is create a template and then just uh, take uh, the plastic to fit the template, meaning having a piece of cardboard or even using my cutting board is a template. And then putting my plastic there, but I did not do that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move all the stuff that's in my way. I'm just going to put that back in my drawer. I'll actually leave it just in case I need it. No. I'm going to put it away and I can always come back for it if I need it. Keep my desk clean. All right, for you guys. All right. So I have here. Bring it around this area here so I can use it as a guide. Ruler. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut, oh no, I'm going to draw first a rectangle. Just use that to guide. Already has a grid on it, so hopefully I'll make a nice square, a rectangle. Okay. I 
can do two things. I can cut with an exacto knife or I can cut with, I think I'll cut with my scissors. Sometimes the scissors are easier. So I just cut out the shape. So. And we just keep on cutting around the edges. Okay, and I'm just gonna move on to one I've already started just so that I can cut time here. And here's the beginning of the first. What I did is I created not the best cut there. And I think I would have used a template to do that or something. I think I just need to cut it down a bit more on this side. Uh, you could just fold it over and get your right angle. Well, it's like making a Valentine's heart. Never been good at that. Okay. So you can see it's open here. So what do you do? You take your tape, find where it ended. Uh, you know, you can just bend over one edge there. I'm just gonna cut a piece and then I'm just gonna cut a strip off. Cut a strip off of it and then Seal the edges. Quite a few edges for me to do. Um, again, I'm not going to do all of them for you for now, but I want you to know that that's what you do. So if it doesn't take long, just you know how to do it, and then you can do it on your own. All right, so now what do you do? Fold it over and you decide how, how much of a overlap you want to your design. Let's say that. Okay, so I just fold it there for now. And then I take the tape and I take the edges. Um, okay, and uh, do the other side. Make sure the edges are nice here. If you want, you can just add a nice, another little tape here. Make sure that it's nice and yeah. over. Fold over, and you got yourself your purse. That's just framework of it. So what you do with it later is uh, what you do next is up to you. But what I like to do is to create uh, a way of closing it. So a hole punch works. And uh, what you do is you just uh, find the center. And so I wish this was a little longer, but it's the only one I could find to work with. And then you got yourself a little hole here. I think I'm going to do two holes. By the way, if you don't like what you've done, you can always cover it up with more plastic bag and uh, tape. That should be good enough. There we go. Okay, so I got two holes here. And I'm going to go back to my scraps right here and I can take so nothing's wasted I can use this for my straps and also we'll figure out what we're going to do for closing it in a second but we're going to start with the strap 
So I'm going to just cut, let me just use my little ruler here as the width. And what happens if I use the exacto knife this time to cut it? Not long enough, so let's go to the next. Might as well not even draw it. I thought I could just use a ruler and press against that with my Zach and I. Oh, that worked. Touch that together. By the way, if you have any questions, please put it in the chat. I'd love to hear from you. I don't know if I'm all alone here or if there's people that are watching. It'd be great to know. We have here is this long enough? Yep. Good enough. And then I'm just going to go back here and see what I've done here. I don't like that, so I'll just cut it off. Again, you'd have to use your tape to go around the edges, and some of them, and not all of them. One side, maybe it's better on the other side, you just have to look. A piece here that Do one more here. You can also erase your felt pen. If there's some on the plastic, comes right off. Erg. There. Okay, let's attach it. Get it here. I'm just going to do it uh, on the side here in the back. Um, 
because I like a little bit of a donut here. Put it down. Okay, so we're almost done. As you can see, pretty fast project. One thing to explore in groups at school or in uh, at home or for yourself. Probably make gifts with these. This idea. Do that one for now. So now for the center part, I was thinking. I'm just going to reach over here. Well, I don't have any ribbon, but I think that that could work quite well. So I have to get down in there. Hmm. So what I'd like to do is um, I think I need to use uh, like a little spot here to remind me that that's attached. And then what I'll do is I'll, um, what I want to do is I want to cut a hole in here. So I'm just going to use my X-Acto knife here. And I'm going to poke a hole through. So just imagine this is kind of could be a really nice little ribbon or something that you could have. I have this one here, but I kind of just like to use what I have. It's elastic. Got two of them. And then on this end, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, tie a knot. And then pull it through. And I'm also going to tape it to reinforce it so it doesn't come off. And you could put a you could sew a button if you wanted to. There, press it down. There. Now I have ribbons. I can put it through. And then tie it up. You got yourself your own purse. Unique, one of a kind. And done in probably half an hour. I'm just going to turn on my iron. And just wait for it to heat to heat up a bit. Something out of here. You know, whatever it is. Oh, there you go. But you can imagine, you know, what else you could do with this, uh, with putting in your own drawings or a message or you know, not cutting it up the plastic as much or changing your colors around. I make a knot and then tie it. So the next little quick project I'm going to show you how you can change this up for those who don't want to use uh, packing tape. You need to have some parchment paper, regular baking paper, two pieces, a hot iron. I would prefer to use one that you're not using for clothing, but you can still use it because you're not touching the plastic. You got your um, your parchment paper or baking paper. Already started one here, bubble wrap really interesting what happens when uh, you heat up the bubble wrap. It transforms into something a little different. And then I'll just go back to some of my plastic. Here. Swing 
her to do it. So, iron to heat up. Now, I find certain plastics work more. I think plastic bags are more effective. Um, you can find out by trying different ones and bubble wrap for sure. But the soft plastic, not the crunchy plastic, will work. What I do is I just take that one parchment paper, put it on underneath the plastic first, and then I add my plastic to this. I want. And then I put the parchment on top. And we'll see what happens. It should be hot enough now. I don't have a mask on. I just will cover my face with my scarf. There. Doing a small little version of this. So you just want to press down and uh, this is on the highest temperature. And what I'm doing is I'm using the plastic. This is what I started doing uh, for myself and how it all kind of began is I started to piece plastic together and I found it became quite interesting. Uh, sometimes the uh, ink would transfer onto my cam, I put it on my canvas, sometimes it transfer on and sometimes the plastic would stick and then I would superimpose uh, drawings on that. So this is one way that you can work and then you can go and you can sew or you can cut. I actually like to coat this a little bit with um, a gel uh, acrylic medium as a way of just sealing it completely. So I just wanted to show you, it's gonna be really close up, but um, this is uh, <laughs> One of my uh, plastic that I, you know, kind of some of it's kind of dirty. It's interesting how it all kind of came about, but you can see how the plastic has, and some of this is just the ink itself that's moved onto my canvas. It's really a fun effect, but probably too toxic for me to continue doing. And that basically wraps up my uh, demo for you. I hope you got something out of it and that you could use it for yourself and that you do. Um, it's going to come back to me. Hi again. <laughs> hope you didn't see too much of my top of my head. <laughs> Working through this whole technical thing is not the easiest for us artists, at least me. Uh, yeah, I hope you got something out of it. I, I, I think that's it. You got yourself a nice little purse. And uh, hopefully you could wear it out in public. There you go, how's that? <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Lori. <clears throat> Does anybody have any questions before we schedule off here? I'm just gonna wait to see. I think we're good. Well, thank you so much, Lori. Really appreciate you joining us today. Okay. I'm just gonna do a little sign off here. So we wanted to let you know too that we'll have some workshops uh, later on. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, there's a Bravo Lori there from, if you check the chat, from thank Susie. You. Thank you, Susie. Thank you very much, Susie. Um, this afternoon, we'll be, have another demonstration going on at 3 p.m. There'll be a lino print demonstration with Kari Christensen and tomorrow at 1 p.m. We're gonna have a painting with molten beeswax demonstration with Sherry Bartlett. You can find and join all of the demos through the events page on our website at culturecrawl.ca. So the Eastside Cultural Crawl runs from the 12th to the 15th in November 19th to 22nd, virtually and in person. You can visit culturecrawl.ca for complete details. Thanks for joining us and I hope everybody has a great afternoon. Take care.